Hi, I'm Thomas, the Eccentric Cyclops, and I was reorganizing my bookshelves the other day when I found this book with the characters, Kanji, on it. it seems pretty beat up. And this was a book of handwritten Kanji that I did when I was going through RTK, remembering the Kanji, which is a method to remember of the Kanji. This book is so beat up that there are pages falling out of it. I calculated that each side of a page has about 400 kanji, so each page has 800 kanji, and I filled in approximately 75 pages, which means that this book contains about 50 to 60,000 handwritten kanji in it. Anyways, while flipping through this book, I realized I never really talked about my Japanese language learning journey on this channel before. Now this channel started as an accountability channel for learning Japanese, but I did Japanese before that. Like, this channel started in the middle of my journey, so I feel like I should start from the beginning and explain everything that I've done up until the channel started. And if you're really curious about what happened between when the channel started and now, well, you can just watch the videos. They're really bad videos. <laughs> but I thought it would be really boring if I just shoot a Talking Heads video of just me explaining my history or some shit. So that's why... Hello, it's Thomas from the Future here, and there's still 10 minutes left in this video that I just wanted to preface that I glossed over a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of nuance that was lost. So if you have any questions, I was thinking of doing an AMA Q&A thing anyways, so ask your questions in the comments below. Not just of this video, but really anything, I guess. Also, I'm taking suggestions on stuff that I should do in Japan again, so tell me what to do in the link in the description below. Anyways, back to the video. While talking, I'm going to try to paint a painting. Okay, don't, don't expect anything too crazy, I'm not fucking Bob Ross here. And I haven't painted in like a few years. Anyways, I'm not using a palette, so I have this old Genki 2 textbook that I just wrapped in aluminum foil. <laughs> but don't- oh god, that, that's a lot of paint. What is this? What color is this? Violet? I guess I'm using violet now. So I basically first started to like... Seriously? Not seriously. I started to put some time into Japanese. Freshman year of college, when I took a Japanese 1 class, Japanese 101, and you know, I was just a weeb back then and I didn't really know what the hell I was getting myself into, but I took Japanese 101 freshman year of college, and then after that, I did nothing for the next three years because I went off to get a degree in computer science. So I basically forgot everything there, so I don't count that. <laughs> so when I really started to seriously learn Japanese, it was when I signed up for Japanese 102 because I had a lot of extra time on my hands. But before I started the class, I decided if I wanted to do Japanese long term, I should knock out one of the hardest aspects of the language which is kanji. So I did what was basically the 100 day kanji challenge, where you try to learn all of the joyo kanji, 2200 kanji basically, in approximately 100 days, which isn't too bad, that's 20 kanji a day, but I decided to be an idiot and wanted to also write down all of the kanji as I reviewed them. That is why I now have a book of 60,000 handwritten kanji. So I went into Japanese 102 knowing every single kanji, and I, understandably, thought the class was really fucking slow. The class, it turns out, was not taught by a native Japanese person, but was taught by a Chinese person who was really good at Japanese. And I went to her office hours and I was like, how did you learn Japanese? I asked her, how did you learn Japanese? And she said she went to an intensive language school and got N1 within two years. And you know, I was pretty blown away by that, but you know, she had some advantages. I mean, she knew Chinese, so it was easy to learn the kanji. And going to an intensive language school, yeah, that, that will help a lot. But I mentioned how the classes seemed really slow, and she agreed with me. And I showed her how I already learned all of the kanji. And she was like, you know, you should just 
learn on your own <laughs> at this point. So uh, that that's kind of what I did. I fucked off and then I started to learn by myself. Actually, technically I did not fuck off because I still had one more semester left in college. So I took Japanese 201, which turned out to be extremely easy. And then I fucked off. So what did I do? Well, I went and basically read through the entirety of Genki 1 and Genki 2. And I also read Tai Kim's grammar guide, which is pretty useful. I read it a couple times actually. And then I basically went directly into sentence mining. So I've been, you know, watching a lot of YouTube videos on how people learned languages through immersion. And this was basically my chance to actually figure it out for myself. After going through all of the grammar and after doing a deep dive sentence mine on two animes that I really liked and could watch over and over again without getting tired of it, which was Kaon and Wodakoi. I had about 3,000 or so words under my belt, and I decided to read my very first book, which turned out to be Konbini Ningen, which is a fairly decent choice for a first book, in my opinion. So after reading that book, and also getting into pitch accent a little bit, and reading a lot about the immersion approach and Stephen Krashen and Steve Kaufman and a bunch of the language learners and polyglots and stuff, I decided to make my own YouTube channel where I just try to keep myself accountable on my Japanese language learning journey. And that's where the YouTube channel started. It started after I already could read. It started after I could watch slice of life anime basically pretty fluently and I'm not gonna lie since this channel started i do not think i have improved a lot but the thing that i've realized is that my goals in japanese compared to other people are pretty underwhelming because my actual goal was to be able to read when i wanted to read and i already accomplished that so it felt like everything afterwards was just side quests. I definitely put too much water on this. Whoopsies. Is it too much water or is it just the paint sucks? This is what, Lucas Kral Studio? I have another paint. Oh, that looks much better, what the fuck? And since everything I do in my life at this point, I do it for fun, Japanese wasn't really fun anymore. So I basically stopped doing it. It was basically since I already achieved my goal, I had to set other not really intrinsically motivating goals for myself to continue learning Japanese. But that was difficult because I am a weirdo and I don't really play video games or watch TV anymore. So a lot of these immersion methods just felt like a chore because I'm motivated to learn Japanese but I'm not motivated to watch TV and combining those two things together the lack of motivation for watching TV wins out the majority of the time. But yeah you know it's not actually a race and it doesn't matter how good I am and there's no time limits and it doesn't even matter whether or not I can speak well. So really Japanese just became another hobby that I do for fun. Well. Uh, I guess I'll paint cherry blossoms. Why not? Uh, is this dry? Eh, whatever. This is not good paint. This is, this paint is understandably, like, very old. But still, what the f- this is. If you're trying to learn a language, or, well, if you're trying to learn anything, because I feel like I have more experience learning just random shit than learning a language, you have to understand yourself, as in, you have to learn how you work. And you might think, I know how I work, I'm me. You don't know how you work. <laughs> Most people are not intentional with their time, even if they think they are. Like, how many times do you think you've caught yourself just scrolling through social media, or, I don't know, like, watching one too many episodes of a TV show or playing video games for too long. Like, there 
is a way for you to learn about yourself and figure out how to be more in control of what you do. Unfortunately, that's different for everyone. So a lot of times before I started learning Japanese, I watched so many videos of like how I learned Japanese in six months or some shit like that. Or like, oh, like two years to N1 progression or like how the military teaches languages, things like that. And a lot of it was just videos of like, oh, how did this person do this? Like, how did that person do this? And yeah, that gave me ideas on things I could experiment with. But it didn't give me an answer to the question, how do I learn? And a part of that is learning a little bit about motivation. Because I feel like a lot of people have the wrong idea about motivation. Oh, that's not good. Oops. Oopsies. Because I think a lot of people, they think, I want to learn a language, I want to learn Japanese, but I'm not motivated enough. I download Duolingo or Anki, I do it for three days, and then I drop off. And then I just never pick it up again. And the issue isn't motivation, because you are motivated. You want to do this thing, right? Why are you not doing this thing? It's not about you not having motivation. It's about you having more motivation to do something else. It's like that thing where like you procrastinate doing your homework by cleaning your house or something, right? Yeah, you need to figure out either how to make doing your homework more motivating or cleaning your house less motivating. Of course, that's easier said than done. But like, there is a reason why I know more instruments. There is a reason why I took up painting and took up urban sketching. And it's because I was motivated to do it. And the motivation was over other things like watching TV or, I don't know, playing video games or, in some cases, my motivation to learn Japanese. So I would say to the person who downloads Anki and does it for a few days and then drops off and never picks it up again, I would ask them to think about what made them not pick it up again? As in, not just how you were feeling, but also what you were doing. Because again, people are not intentional with their time, and they have to learn to pay attention to what they're actually doing. I'm just painting a tree at this point. So a lot of questions people have when they want to be more productive and stuff is like, oh, how do I make a good habit? How do I... I don't know, go to the gym every day, or how do I learn Japanese and do my flashcards every single day? And that is another question that you have to figure out yourself. No matter how many self-help books you read, it doesn't really matter if you don't figure out which ones actually work for you. And it doesn't really matter if you don't try to just implement the fucking methods or find your own methods. So what's the advice that I'd give to someone who wants to learn Japanese? or really wants to learn anything. My first advice would be learn about yourself, learn how you work, and know that it changes over the years. You will change over the years and things that used to work for you might not work for you anymore. The second thing I would advise people to do, especially if when they're starting, is set a goal or set a direction. And make it achievable and make it short term. Make it something that you could do within three months, let's say. And the third thing I would say is like, just have fun, you know? It's a hobby. It's not a job. Unless, unless you want it to be a job in which, good luck, I guess. Like, if you feel yourself getting burnt out, if you feel that it's a struggle, even if you have the habit formed already, you should maybe take a step back and rethink how you want to do things. And you know, you could always come back to it later. Made this flower way too big. Oh well, whatever. I feel like I should say I'm still learning Japanese, but I think people might think that I'm spending more time on Japanese than I actually am. Because in reality, I'm probably only putting in maybe 
5% of a day on average on Japanese. So half an hour at max, maybe. Because luckily, I got to a point where I can sustain my level without too much work. Okay, you know, I think I'm done with this painting. You know, whenever you create something, there's always stuff that you can fix or stuff that you can work on. But at some point, you just have to call it, well, <laughs> here's my textbook palette, you know. Hopefully, what I've said made sense because I've been painting for like an hour or something and uh, I do not remember everything that I said. So I hope that I can edit this video into something that isn't complete trash. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later.